And welcome back. Today we're flying out the C205 Series 1, the 3.0 version with the absolute horrific guns that are that Bradas so fats. They did get buffed a little bit ago, but they are still nothing to write home about. And the reason I am making a video on this thing is to show you what to do if you can't kill people in the first pass. I heard some comments, I heard some guys in my DMs as well, they were like, well I don't have aim like yours, what if I miss, what if I don't kill them? I'm now in a very bad position, but I do admit that a lot of my decisions are based on the fact that I'm pretty confident that I'm going to be killing them. With this thing, you can't do that. So I'll be showing you my thought process, I'll be showing you what I do to make sure that I don't die if I don't kill them in the first pass. In the meantime, I get hit by a teammate. And just to show off the P400 here, very bad playing. The P29 was styled out, basically didn't die. This guy's going very slow and I basically one shot him. The guns are very inconsistent and this makes it so that you can't rely on your guns so you will just have to plan two or three passes while trying not to die and making sure that he does die and this makes for a little bit of a different dynamic and i got some dogfights for you today i got some team fights i got a 2v1 versus a more maneuverable plane key 61 as well as a f4u that played it relatively smart and i thought it was a great way to start the year off with something that you guys can relate to a little bit more so plan on your capabilities whether it's your plane or your yourself as a pilot you need to make sure that what you do actually makes sense and that it can actually work i can plan here to reverse the bf109 e which is more maneuverable than me try to get in the 0.1 second snapshot and hope that i kill this pilot it's probably not going to happen so i will not be playing that way instead i will be bringing this guy up to a little bit of a higher altitude but my engine and speed are just superior and as this guy is going up very slowly for me he will be bleeding altitude, bleeding speed, I mean, and I can just kind of pitch up here. He does not have the speed to pitch up after me here. And I have a guide on energy management as well. Highly recommend you to check that one out because it goes a little bit more in depth than here. Now I can do two things here. I can try to stall on the top of him or I try to keep a little bit more speed and try to pull up into his loop. He's going very slow now. I'm picking up speed. I'm dropping my flaps. And I'm just going to try to get a few shots in and then we just go straight back up. And I could have tried to throttle drop him there, try to maybe get in a very long burst or maybe he would have dodged me and then I'm out of energy. So here instead of trying to very much focus on the shot, I'm trying to focus on keeping my energy and keeping my angles right. So I'll just get infinite amount of shots. Yeah, at this point he is crit, he is damaged and he is not doing very well so I'm not as worried about it anymore. The Spitfire in the meantime is flying off to Narnia I guess. And as we pull up after him he is out of energy completely. And we shoot him out of the air pretty easily. But that was a low tier pilot that made a lot of mistakes. Let's look at the Key 61 here. That's flying it a lot better than the previous guy. The f u is more of a nuisance but it's a very strong plane and I want to be careful of him. The Key 61 is highly maneuverable and this thing is not that much anymore it got nerfed quite a while ago or it got changed not sure if it's a nerf or not it holds its speed very well now but it doesn't turn that well so you need to take that into account you have a plane that doesn't turn well and that can also probably not kill in a single pass so how do you go around this you try to stall them out and you try to slowly but surely work them down to a point where they can't dive out anymore and these these two guys are switching targets, they are breaking off and they are separating making it so that I have to choose one of these two guys and I'm only on three and a half minutes of fuel here and I say only and that's because of the way they are flying. The FU is trying to bait me down as he tries to circle underneath the Key 61 but at this point the FU doesn't have the best climb rate, it's not that great in this kind of scenario, he should have just broken off, flown away, maybe get some altitude and try to boom zoom me. But the way he's flying right now, he's in a very bad spot. So I will just be focusing on the Key 61 because he is clearly flying it a lot better than the FU. But right now the FU is presenting himself right underneath me. So I want to push him down a little bit if I can. Of course I keep looking at the Key 61 because I don't want to end up below that guy. Because if I do, I am very likely going to die. I can of course try to dive out. I can of course try to dive out, run away. But I don't have the fuel for that, nor do I have the match time. At this point he is one and a half kilometers away and I'm just going to be pitching straight up. I have to cool my engine now as well so I'm going to be lacking some of that engine power. And I'm not going to make that shot so I'm not going to stick it. Instead I will go straight for a little bit. Make him do another 180. Make him bleed even more speed and we are just going to pitch up straight over the F4U. And if he tries to pitch up for us here I can very, very easily hammer at him 
and the key 61 will not come close his aim isn't very bad and he's giving me more and more reasons to pay attention to him and straight up ignore the FU. But we are now in a pretty good position because of the way I've been flying and slowly pulling this fight upwards. I basically cut the FU out of the fight. He's too slow, he's too low and he's not in a position to do anything against me in that plane. The Key 61 now, look at his energy state, is slowly catching me if I start turning in. I am faster, I have more altitude. So what do I do? I just pull in horizontally make him pitch up for me and then once he starts getting close enough i will just pitch straight up he will get a very very short firing solution here and he notices that is not worth it he has the same mindset as i do don't throw everything into a shot you're not sure the kill with the problem is at that point he was already dead he stuck to fight he should have taken the shot but we all learn from our mistakes the key 61 is now out of the fight i have one minute and 10 seconds left of fuel and his FU is in a pretty bad spot. All he can do now is try to run away. And if he does, I will make it back to the airfield. So either way, I'm not in a very bad position here. If he doesn't run away, however, he is 100% going to be dying. I have the position here to just slot on his 6. And he is not going to be doing much about it other than high speed. Because he does compress a fair bit less than us, especially in the roll department. So what we do is make sure we secure our position. So I'm going to be cutting the throttle. I delayed my turn there a little bit to stay firmly on his 6 and he's gonna try to roll around. He does turn better than me, but he doesn't have the engine to actually turn better sustain. So what do we do? We make this fight as slow as possible by cutting throttle, going straight up and trying to stay on his 6. We are reaching 300 kilometers an hour. We go back to wapping and at this point I basically turn into a helicopter compared to what he is flying. And you can tell that he turns a little bit better than me, but because of my position as well as my energy management, of the plane i can just stay on a six and at this point it doesn't matter if he turns better or worse anymore he is too slow to do anything and he's not on a zero got a pretty lucky roll on the damage there and i take off his wing with relative ease and here we have another t61 pretty boring match altogether because even though it's like 4v8 i think they all camped the airfield don't ask me why that's just what it was so we start diving on the t61 here we are gonna be running him down pretty easily but again, he is quite a bit more maneuverable than me. But this time, we are at lower altitude. So the engine power is a lot closer here. And he's a lot more dangerous than the last guy was at high altitude. And you saw that he could pull into us pretty easily. I'm compressing a little bit here. I'm having trouble getting my guns on. I'm going sideways, waiting for him to pitch up. Waiting above him. So he flies into my guns. I miss. I'm going simply too fast. Get some black puffs here and there. Notice that he's out turning me. So we just go up a little bit. And then we pull straight back down because he's not paying attention. We get a beautiful shot here. But again, the guns let us down. So now I can try to stay behind him or I just stall him out. I'm just going to try to stay out of his guns. And because of the speed that I maintain and the speed that I had on entry, I can very easily just stay out of his guns. I'm delaying my drop here. I'm just waiting for his nose to fall. There he goes. We drop the flaps and we pull straight after him. And at this point, he's very slow. He is not going to be doing much. We hit him a bit, we set him on fire, and down he goes. And you saw there that I started pulling off before he was already dead. And that's because I'm not committing to that shot in case I don't kill him. I shoot a few rounds at him, I start pulling up. If he goes after us, I will maintain that energy trap for the next two or three shots until he starts equalizing because he simply turns much better than me and has a much lower stall speed. But if I don't kill him in two or three passes, then I deserve to die. So it is what it is then. And here we are again, another key 61 in orbit as well as a key 44 and the key 44 is a pretty different plane to the normal japanese planes that you will run into because the key 44 is actually pretty damn fast it also got buffed guns the japanese 50 cals are pretty strong now they're not as great as say american 50 cals or 20 mils but they are definitely much better than whatever the fuck i'm running on this thing so i want to be kind of scared of that he might have four he might have two i'm not too sure which version it is right now but judging from his altitude and i think that's the key 44 one camo it's this inferior version which has, which has only 250 gals and has a worse engine. So I'm not as scared of him. I just want to push him down a little bit. And then I can pull back up here and engage the key 61 that was at altitude as well. So I look around and he's gone. He did the exact same thing. He dove to the deck. And now we are in a pretty damn good position. I'm at altitude together with Razor which is in one of the most under tier props in the entire game. And I'm in a plane that's extremely strong but doesn't have the best firepower. But if we work together well, even if our entire team was dead right now, we probably could be able to just claw it back to a victory. 
Right now, we are just looking around. We are deciding who to engage. And there's an F4F there and a P36. Not the most dangerous plane. There's key 44s here and key 61s. So, instead, we want to engage these first. Because they are busy right now and they are definitely the higher value target. So I want to kill them as they are busy making the entire fight after this a lot easier. The F4F is again one of those planes that really can do anything. It's one of the worst planes in the game BR for BR. So I can ignore him for the most part. But if he presents himself I will of course gun him down. I'm not going to be able to get that shot in. I'm going to see if I can maybe swipe the F4F. He notices me and he turns back in. So I'll just ignore him. And go straight back up. I'm going about 600 kilometers an hour at this point. One of the key 44s goes down. Which is great. And now we turn this 4v2 into a 3v4. And we are in the number advantage. One of ours goes down. Unfortunate. And now I'm just picking targets. And the key 44 is flying away from me. So I will be slotting in on a 6. I'm just going to get the one shot. I'm not going to keep pulling. We just break off. And we fly away. I don't have to commit to this. He is crit now as well. There's two guys on his six that can interrupt the fight. So I'm just going to be ignoring him from now. I'm just going to be flying away. I'm going to use my speed to get some altitude. As well as some separation. The razor digs down the key 61. And now it's a 2v2. And he sets the key 44 on fire with a single 50 kill. Pretty great. And now we have an F4 FE and a P36. And both of these planes are not very scary. But they do turn very well. And they have 50 kills. So it can end very badly if you make a mistake. But as long as we fly it safe here. There is not much they are going to be doing. P36 here is probably more dangerous than the F4F. Because they are both pretty bad. But P36 is better with lower speeds. And he can just keep pulling up. Because he doesn't really stall. But right now I can't really engage these guys because I'm going to run into another FRF. And even though the FRFs are absolutely horrible. When there's this many of them and they're spaced out in this kind of manner. I'm not going to take that fight. So I'm going to be flying away from him for a little bit. Make these guys below us do another 180. And I'm just going to get a little bit of separation. A little bit of altitude on this other FRF. Mr. Mukau 2008. Fantastic name. And bleed him of a little bit of extra energy before I start pulling straight up. The other FRF breaks over this point. And then he comes back in. Just wasting more and more energy. And I'm doing the same thing as I did in the Key 61 2v1. Where I'm kind of going horizontal because he's coming in closer. And if he commits to this fight, if he tries to pitch up for me here, he simply dies. So he dodges shot. He managed to nick one fifth cal somewhere on my plane. Didn't actually do any damage. Probably desync since it didn't do any damage. And he's just stalled out. And the FRF is still pretty maneuverable. Same way as the FRU is. But it doesn't have the engine to keep it up. Because it will just instantly drop to that 200 km an hour mark. Where it just falls out of the air. The main thing that plane has is survivability. It's an absolute tank. And it will probably put that fire out. And I'll just fly away. There it goes. Instantly out. Razor says the other guy on fire, the P36. He is actually going to burn up because that thing is made out of paper. And now we have a crit FRF with a lot of fire damage. Which is going to make his plane significantly worse. If his plane is full with red, orange and black components. He's going to be slower, he's going to accelerate worse, he's going to turn worse. And he's going to bleed more speed. All in all, he's not in a good position. But he's also basically out of the fight. So I'm not in a hurry to kill him. He can RTB if he wants and then I'll... 2v1 him at the end after we clean up this 3v1 that Razor is having I'm gonna jump in it's gonna be a 2v3 a lot more winnable and we are definitely in the better position here P39 runs circles around all those planes but there's also an H75 coming in which is kind of like the P36 very maneuverable but it doesn't have 50 kills so it's not as scary one of them goes down I notice that the FRF is trying to come back into the fight so at this point I might as well stick to him might as well try to gun him down quickly here because Razor is going to be much faster than all those guys. So I already committed a little bit to him. I'm going to do one pass on him. And if I don't kill him here, I will fly back to whatever Razor is doing. But you can tell he's not doing very well at this point. Mukau is going to be milked. Shoot some more rounds at him. Shoot his wingtip off. And we can just fly straight to the what 2v3 now. And we don't have to worry about him coming out of nowhere because we have everyone confined in this very slim area. And now I will just assist Razor again. It's three guys on his six. We are pretty close to their airfield. 
and I'll just see if one of them wants to go for me. There he comes, one of the FRFs, and he is not in a good position to pitch up towards me. He is catching me now, but I'm giving him the illusion by simply not flying straight away from him, because at this point I am faster than him, and I am at an altitude advantage, so I have a lot more energy here, and he, he is not going to have the best engine either. He is starting to be outrun, which is what I don't want, because then he's probably going to pull off, and that's exactly what he's doing. So I'm going to be pretending to force the head-on here, in the hope that he pulls in for me, and does exactly that. There he comes. He comes head-on with us, he simply dodges guns, he's way too slow to do anything here. We simply go up over his nose, drop the flaps, and we pull down after him. And there's not much he's going to be doing, because the FRF, as I said, is simply way too slow. Low to your pilot, definitely, because I one-shot this pilot out. He needs to upgrade those crew skills a little bit. VG33 also goes down and the last guy camps the airfield for a little bit and then he dies to us in a 2v1. But I'm not going to be showing you that because that 2v1 lasted approximately 6 seconds and the camping period took way too long. And here we are in the first game I ever did in the C205 Series 1. So I wasn't really sure what to expect from this thing yet because I didn't know how poorly this thing turned. I had flown the S3 for a little bit a while ago but the flight model got changed and I see two P39Ns which are definitely high priority targets. Dive on one, focus him down, gun him down, set him on fire. And we are at a pretty high altitude here for low tier. We're only at 4 kilometers, but the P-29N, with every meter it gains, it loses another horsepower. And that's of course an over-exaggeration, it doesn't actually work like that. But the engine power of the P-29N drops off drastically if you compare it from 3 kilometers to the deck. So I'm not too worried about him up here. Of course I want to be as high as I can because the P-29 is one of those planes that's extremely dangerous no matter what you are flying because it either outruns you or it outturns you and in most cases it does both so you don't want to have that thing on your 6 or let alone anywhere near you. Notice that the P-29 is diving on Razor and I want to make sure that the P-29 dies here. I'm not too worried about the P-440 but if he presents himself I will kill him as well or at least I'll try to. P40 here is flying straight, he's trying to shoot at Razor and get some hits in, not enough though, and we only get a little crit in, no damage indicator on the bottom right, which basically indicates that we did absolutely piss all in, so we just exit the area and we get our little bit of altitude back from all that speed that we have from diving in like that. And now everyone's on the deck, and we have quite a few friendlies up at altitude, we have two friendlies there, we have Razor next to us, and we ourselves are also at a pretty good position. So, Razor base the dogfight with the P29. I'm not going in straight in just yet. I'm waiting for him to commit to the fight. There he comes. He notices me anyway, however. So we just dodge the head on. Because that's not something I want to take. And because he's trying to well, dogfight us now. He's getting swarmed by the entire enemy team. Or their entire enemy team. And down he goes pretty handily. And now it's just a matter of cleaning up. We are all at an energy advantage we all have pretty decent planes and they are all on the deck in P40s, F6Fs, P51s and these are not the worst planes but in the position that they are in I'd much rather be in the plane that I'm flying right now or any of these planes that my team is flying right now P40 I'm at the front you don't want to pitch up for the first guy because if you do well you'll see exactly what will happen to you if you do so I'm just trying to get everyone to pitch up for me, I'm just flying around, I'm looking around who's presenting themselves, who is making a very big mistake, and it's the F6F, he's very very slow, so we make sure that he dies, make sure to stop shooting as the FU flies in between our rounds, as you can say it's your fault for flying through my guns, but I clearly see him and I have time to react, so I stop shooting for a little bit, wish more teammates did that kind of thing, because the amount of times it got me killed is pretty damn high. So my teammates are now getting involved into the football. And it's going to make it so that they are going to well keep turning on the deck. Which is great for us. Because it means they're going to be wasting more energy. The Spitfire here is actually going to be the main target. Because it's one of those planes I do not want to fight in the C205. It's one of those planes that stalls pretty late. It climbs pretty decently. It's very slow. But it's very annoying to kill when you have a plane that doesn't do the most amount of damage. I say as he blows up in a single shot. When they are very maneuverable. It's like fighting a zero with a 7.7. .7. You can hit him over and over, but you only need one mistake and you will die. He has the advantage in terms of leniency, so he can kind of do whatever the hell he wants. And if I make one big mistake, or even a small one, 
it's likely that I die. Whereas he can just weasel himself out of every scenario. Because I can't one-shot him. I, I, I struggle hitting him to begin with. And then when I do, he will probably not die either. So I have to be very careful around planes like that. And with the Hellcat, it's a little bit different. It does turn very well, but it doesn't have that energy to actually do anything with it. So I'm not going to be going head on with him. I'm going to go a little bit sideways. And I'm going to make him waste even more speed trying to pitch up for us. Then we go up over his nose, directly over his nose. We go sideways to minimize the profile he can shoot at. He manages to hit one stray 50 cal on the back of my plane. He doesn't do any damage. And now I can just start running this energy trap, of which he is not going to get out. No way in hell. The top of his loop is the bottom of mine. And I'm going 400 at that bottom. I want to be careful here, however, because he has the speed to pitch up for me. And if I go straight vertical there, he's going to hose me down. And I do not want that. So I go a little bit sideways, get a better line. And then we go back to pulling straight vertical. Now he is going way too slow. He's not going to be doing anything. Look at that. He's basically stalling out now. And he's a full 800 meters below us. And there you go. Too slow to pitch up. He tries to go horizontal here to maintain his energy. But at that point he's already too late. We send him on fire. He's going to burn up from that. And that's going to be game. Hope you enjoyed it. And see you in the next one.